Hello, I am Dr. Anju and this is Dr. Neetu. She is our subject today. We will be discussing three cranial nerves today. That is your third, fourth and sixth cranial nerve. That is oculomotor, trochlear and abducens. Why these three are tested together is because these three function together as a physiological unit in the control of ocular movements. Now under this we will be testing, we will be uh, doing under three headings that is ocular movements, you will be looking for any squint or ptosis and finally you will be looking for pupillary movements. Now we need to know what are the extraocular muscles and which supplied by which cranial nerve. We know the extraocular muscles are supplied by the third cranial nerve that is your ocular motor nerve except for lateral rectus and your superior oblique. We know lateral rectus is supplied by your sixth cranial nerve and superior oblique is supplied by your fourth cranial nerve. Now we look in the ocular movements. Considering your left eye, when the eyeball moves away from the midline, that is abduction, the eyeball moving towards the midline, that is adduction, and the eyeball is moving upwards, that is elevation, eyeball moving downwards is depression, there is also Intorsion and extorsion of the eyeball, which can't be tested. Muscles of ocular movements. When the subject comes looks towards his left side, the left eye is abducted by lateral rectus and the right eye is adducted by medial rectus. Now, the left eye in his abducted position, looking upwards by superior rectus and depression by inferior rectus. The adducted eye elevations by inferior oblique and depression by superior oblique. Now we will be testing for the ocular movements. For that we will be facing the subject and sitting at a one arm distance and few things we have to uh, take care into is first is you have to explain the procedure to your subject. Next is getting the consent from your subject. Another thing is we will be testing both eyes at the same time. Also in order to avoid any movements of the head per se we will be fixing the head of the subject with your other hand okay so we'll be using the finger and we'll be asking the subject to follow the finger movement so i'll show you first i'll be facing my subject i'll be uh, first i'll be explaining the procedure i've already explained uh, shall i do the procedure i'll be asking the consent from the subject next is we will be testing both eyes together i'll be fixing the head of the subject and this is the finger that i'll be using so that the subject follows this finger with her eye movement alone and we will be following an edge pattern to find out the eye movements. So first from the center I will be moving horizontally so that we can see the lateral movement of my subject's left eye alongside there will be medial or abduction of the subject's right eye. And now we go upwards this is elevation and now we go down this is depression and we come to the horizontal plane again we go to the center. And here from this point, we will be look, uh, taking the uh, hand away. This is for the lateral movement of my subject's right eye. Meanwhile, there is medial or abduction, uh, adduction of the left eye. Again, upwards, elevation, depression, come back to the uh, horizontal plane and back to the starting point. This is how you will be testing for the ocular movements. This is again to be very sure that you are testing both eyes at the same time. This is... Uh, about the ocular movements. After ocular movements, we will be looking for squint and ptosis. Squint or strabismus, it is due to the non-alignment of the visual axis. It can be due to the palsy of third, fourth or sixth cranial nerve. This can be found out while doing the ocular movements. Ptosis, ptosis is nothing but it is the drooping of eyelids. It is due to the palsy of third cranial nerve which supplies the levator palpebrae superioris. Okay, next we will be looking for pupillary movements. Under pupillary movements we have three headings. First is pupil size, next is pupil shape and pupillary reflexes. For size you will be looking both pupil size whether they are equal in size. And you will be looking next is the shape of the pupil, whether they are regular and round. In normal subjects, we will be seeing regular round shaped pupils. Third is the pupillary reflexes. Under pupillary reflexes, you have light reflex and accommodation reflex. Under light reflex, you can you have you again have direct and indirect light reflex. I'll tell you what is direct and indirect. 
direct is nothing but uh, first of all you have to know that you'll be testing both eyes separately and you'll be shining a torch light into one eye and you'll be looking to the pupillary reflex of the same eye for that you have to see your subject in an indirectly illuminated room and be using a torch light and you will be shining the torch light from the side of the eye to be tested and when you put or you fall the light slowly upon the pupil of the uh, eye to be tested you can see there is constriction of the pupil that is called meiosis and when you take away the torch light you can see there is dilatation of the pupil that is called midriasis this is direct light reflex Next, we will be looking for indirect light reflex. It is also called the concentrated light reflex. Here, the eye to be tested is shaded using your palm, either keeping it like this or like this, so that the light rays are prevented from falling onto your shaded eye. And the torch light is shined from the side of the other eye, and we are looking for the pupillary constriction on the shaded eye. And the reason for indirect light reflex is that there is crossing over of fibers at the optic chiasma and at the midbrain. I will be demonstrating the direct light reflex. The point to be noted here is that we are shining the torch light from the side so as to avoid the accommodation reflex. Here I am using a torch light and demonstrating the direct light reflex on the left eye. Here we are shining the torch light from the side and we are observing pupillary constriction of the left eye. Next is indirect light reflex. For that, we are shading the eye to be tested using the palm so that no light rays fall on the shaded eye. And again, the torch light is shined from the side of the other eye and look for the pupillary constriction of the shaded eye. Now, let's see accommodation reflex. What is accommodation reflex? It is the reflex action of the eye in response to focusing on a near object. It has got three components. First is the convergence of the eyeball. Second, the constriction of the pupil. Third is the increase in the anterior curvature of the lens. The first two components can be observed while doing the procedure. Now let's see the procedure. The subject is asked to place a finger in front of the nose. Now the subject is asked to look at a distant object and quickly asked to focus onto the fingertip. Here we can see two things that is the convergence of the eyeball and the constriction of pupil. By this we have completed the examination of third, fourth and sixth cranial nerves. Thank you.